Hello and welcome to another lecture on switch mode power converters. Today we will be looking at the buck converter which is one of the most fundamental switching regulators. In my previous videos we were looking at linear regulators and there we saw that the dissipation in the series pass element was one of the limiting factors with regards to efficiency. In switch mode power converters, the transistor is not operated in the active region, but rather it is switched on and off periodically. So let's look at these two modes of operation in more detail. So the first operation we'll look at is during T on, when the transistor behaves like a short circuit. So we can assume that the voltage here at this point, let's call it V1, is equal to VDC because this transistor is turned on, which means that current can flow from the source towards the load. So this means that this voltage is also positive VDC like this. And therefore this diode becomes reverse biased and it can be assumed that it's no longer connected in the circuit. So during T on, this is what our circuit looks like. We have VDC connected to an LC filter followed by the load. So during T on, if I have one switching period T, so if this is my switching period, during T on, the voltage V1 is equal to VDC. So this is the operation when the transistor is turned on. Let's see what happens when the transistor is turned off. So during T off, we can assume that the transistor is an open circuit. So the supply is no longer connected to this point, which is V1. But as we know that an inductor cannot change its current instantaneously, so the current must continue to flow in this direction, which was already flowing before the transistor turned off. And since this voltage is now decreasing quickly because the supply is no longer there, as soon as it becomes in negative 0.8, then this diode becomes forward biased because this point is connected to ground and thus there's a forward drop in this direction and this gives a path for the current to flow which you can see with these red arrows so the current is flowing in this direction during t off but this voltage at this point if we assume that the diode is uh, is ideal we can assume that this voltage is zero so during t off period from this point to this point, the output voltage V1, well, not the output voltage, the voltage at this intermediate point between output and input can be assumed to be zero. So if I take these two modes of operation together, T on and T off, we get a waveform like this. So the output voltage V0 is basically the average of this signal. So during time T on, the, the output is VDC, and during time T off, the output voltage is zero. Point V1 is followed by an LC filter. What I get here at the output, which is V0, is the average value of the signal here. Now we will show that the average value of this waveform is equal to this expression here, VDC times T on over T. So we know that average value of a signal, in this case it is V0, which is the average value of this waveform, can be written as 1 over T integral 0 to T. So we integrate this signal over one time period till this point. 
because after this point the signal starts to repeat so 1 over t integral 0 to t then the signal that i want to integrate which is v1 the signal at this point v1 so this time period can now be divided into two time periods from 0 to t on and from t on till t so this can be written as 1 over t integral 0 to t on v1 dt plus t on to t v1 dt now the signal v1 only exists till t on because after that its value is 0 so if i plug this value here so 1 over t integral 0 to t on from 0 to t on the value is nothing but the supply vdc dt and from t on to t the value is 0 so this integral vanishes and i am left with this so if i integrate it i would get 1 over t v dc times t because a constant integral of a constant is just that variable and if i plug in the limits from 0 to t on i get the average value as v dc times t on over t which is this value here and this fraction t on over t is called the duty cycle so for the sake of our discussion here for the first few lectures we'll assume that the duty cycle is varying but the total time period or the frequency is constant this is called fixed frequency and variable duty cycle behavior the output voltage can be written as duty cycle times the input VDC. So this was the first lecture on the basic operation of a buck regulator. In the next lecture, we will go into more detail about the feedback loop that we have here. How is the PWM operation achieved in a buck regulator? And also we will look at uh, how these uh, components, the inductor and the capacitor are designed. So that's it for today. See you in the next lecture.